All right, um, let's get started. People will continue to come in, but um, I want to get you back on time. My name is Jim Perkins. I'm from the Quorum Group. I am a software entrepreneur like you. I've been in the video game business for 25 years. Um, was a pub, the pub, had two publishing companies, um, publishing games, some of the early first-person shooters like uh, Duke Nukem, Wolfenstein, Quake. I also helped fund the original Unreal project with Epic and have had experience over the last 25 years, as I say, um, in building and selling my own software companies. And uh, what I do now is I help other people sell software companies. So Quorum Group is a mergers and acquisitions advisor. We help companies that want to sell, sell to larger companies like Big Fish and Google and uh, Activision and, and those types of companies. And I'll get into that in a bit. I've got uh, four sessions today. The first session is an update on what's going on in mergers and acquisitions in Asia. And that'll be about 20 minutes. Uh, then I'm going to have a little session on what to do and what not to do to help yourself prepare and sell your game company. And then we'll have a um, buyer's panel where I'll have a, a, a very, very active buyer in the market um, explain and uh, go into some, some stories about how he goes about acquiring companies. And then this afternoon, after the, after the lunch session and the show and sell session um, with the indies, I'm going to have a seller's panel. And uh, we'll have the uh, CEO of Gloops on, which sold recently to Nexon and a couple of other people, and they're going to sell, uh, sh they're going to uh, share their experience in selling companies. So let me, let me get started. What, what I should say is um, we also, I want to make sure that uh, everybody has a copy of this presentation. So if you do want, and you can't wait until getting it online with Casual Connect, um, you can get the slides from me. Just leave me a card, and I'll email those to you as quickly as possible. Uh, also, if you've got questions, try to leave them to the end. We've got a microphone for questions, and um, I'd be happy to answer those. And if we don't answer those, I, uh, I can answer them after or at break, whatever the case may be. So let me get started. Uh, again, my name is Jim Perkins. What I wanted to do is talk about um, an update in the Asian market specifically on mergers and acquisitions. Uh, I'm going to give you an idea of what's going on in digital game trends, talk about China, Japan, and Korea specifically, talk about recent activity in games m and um, and then talk about some Asian notables. There's some companies, there's really three or four companies that have been extremely active, and I'm going to also talk a little bit about Tencent, and then conclusions and looking forward. So digital game and download content is up 33% year over year in the U.S., and you're up uh, digital content in, uh, in Asia. And digital content um, is 40% now of the total game spend in the U.S. Amazing. What a, what a tr transition from retail. Um, Asia is projected to dominate online and mobile games in 2010. And of note here is Chinese gamers are the youngest gamers out there with 37% under, under 18. Um, we expect that mobile gaming spending in China will exceed $1 billion this year. Um, and spending in the U.S. And last year was $2.1 billion. We expect the Asian market to um, eclipse that significantly. As you can see by this chart, um, the mobile game space and the online game space are the, the most active uh, spaces here, and they're growing dramatically. The console space in the dark blue is, is dropping off a bit. We expect that maybe to dip up with the announcement of the recent consoles. I expect, I think they're announcing the next Microsoft, the uh, next Xbox tomorrow in the States. But uh, mobile and online gaming is clearly the, the dominant force and the growing force in the marketplace, in the global marketplace. We see a major shift to tablets. So a lot of developers are building games specifically for, uh, for tablets. And it, we expect it's going to generate about three times the uh, in-app revenue on tablets than North America by 2016 in, uh, in Asia. Um, as it says here, Asia is overtaking North America as a key revenue-producing market. And we expect a dual launch for many of the uh, mobile games on Google, app, uh, Google Play and the App Store, uh, where studios will focus on both for a worldwide launch. 
Um, here's a mix of what's going on in the marketplace today. The App Store uh, is dominating here in North America. Um, it's got some presence here in Asia, and these numbers have shifted, changed, shifted dramatically since last year. Google Play is still uh, dominant in Asia and only about 20% in North America. So let's talk a little bit about China and Japan and South Korea. The Chinese mobile gaming market is about 425 million new smartphones installed this year. Uh, mobile gaming revenue will grow about 50% through 2015. There's a lot of fragmentation in the market, and uh, we expect this is going to solve itself in the future. Um, Android has about 70% of the market, um, and the, the, uh, in terms of launch strategies, the focus really is on Android. Um, the key to the success here is developing relationships with the App Store operators and to localize with a partner to, to localize these titles and ch cut through the uh, bureaucracy. Japanese gaming, Japanese game profiles, similar to European and North American players. Uh, the, older, the older the player, the higher the monetization. Uh, about $4.16 billion in social gaming spent this, uh, in 2012 with an ARPU of about $50 a, a month. 55% Android, 36% iOS. You have to be prepared to go into the Japanese market. There's no question about it. We've seen a lot of fatalities in, that Jap in the Japanese market. South Korean market. South Korea had deregulated um, the review for, of all games for the App Store, which helped uh, a huge growth in 2012 for mobile gaming. Um, we can see here 41% is expect growth in uh, mobile gaming is expected for 2013. And um, by 2017, we'll see that market stabilize at about 50, 12 to 15, 18% a year over year growth. So let's look at two of the top, top, top strategic buyers that are in the, uh, in the market today. And these are overall software companies. These are not just game companies, but they're relevant to the gaming market. Um, Google, Facebook, Intel, a couple of private equity firms, Microsoft, Avnet, Oracle. Look at the two top ones there, Google and Facebook. Both are moving into the gaming space in a big way. They've, they're hiring people, they've got executives on board, and they're key um, buyer targets for us. They will continue to be the dominant strategic buyers in 2013, 2014. Um, in 2012, we set a new record, $3.2 billion of disclosed um, transactions uh, with an uh, estimated $4, 4 billion in total transaction value um, with the ones that, are non not, that haven't been disclosed. This is a 15% increase over 2011, but the number of transactions decreased by about 12%. So that meant that the average transaction uh, value rose 60% to approximately $50 million per transaction. So what we're seeing is bigger deals, less deals, um, and that seems to be the trend moving forward. The other interesting thing is that seven of the top 10 deal buyers were from South Korea, China, or Japan. So there's a real focus. Clearly, Asia is dominating in terms of making those acquisitions, and we'll get into a little more detail on that in a few minutes. Um, here's an interesting chart on transaction value. Uh, most of the activity, as you can see, is in uh, MMO games and mobile. Uh, we still have a lot of activity in social and casual, with a lot less in console and PC. So if you're in the mobile, um, you know, in the mobile or the MMO space, uh, you're in a great space. And that's what this conference is all about, obviously. Um, in terms of volume, the number of deals, again, most of the deals are happening in mobile, uh, quickly followed by um, MMO and social and casual. And here's the history of what's going on in the M&A um, market for, for games. You can see some trends here, but massive trend upwards in 2009, 2000 and 2010, and then 11 and 12. The, the blue bar there reflects that there were a less number of deals done 
but the value, the total transaction value of uh, M&A in games has gone up. So less deals, higher values, higher valuations. Let's, uh, let's review what's going on in game investment. Game, in, uh, game investments were about, uh, up about 9%. Um, the average transaction value, however, was down about 57%. So a lot less pure dollars going into game investment uh, companies. The average size of an investment was $5 million. Um, and more mobile games were, uh, game studios were funded. Kickstarter actually, and this is amazing, accounted for 6% of all investments. And that's going up. Pretty impressive. Uh, game investment transaction value. Most of, the, of the, the value is in mobile, as we expected, and, uh, and um, middleware and gamification, amazingly. So the investment money is, is going into middleware and, and, uh, and other tools for gamification, followed by mobile. And in terms of transaction volume, most of the deals, the count, deal count is, uh, is in, in, in mobile, followed by middleware and gamification. So there's more money in terms, or more deals being done in mobile. Here are some of the deals that have happened over the last 12 months. You can read them as well as I, and I, again, you can get, we've got more detail in the charts, but I'd be happy to send you these slides that, uh, when you give me your business card. Of note here, uh, we've got Gree, very active, Giant is becoming more active. Um, Nexon, uh, by in a huge deal with Gloops, and we'll have the CEO of Gloops here this afternoon talking about that deal. Sony obviously bought Gaikai, and WebZen as well. So let's talk about uh, Asian notables. Again, I'm gonna go through this relatively quickly, but I. Um, I encourage you to ask questions afterwards about the market and, and what we're seeing worldwide. The, the most notable companies here are Giant, which became more active, Gree, which is very active, um, NeoWiz, and then Nexon. And in the next chart, uh, we'll see their revenues. Gree with the most, but you've got Nexon really growing quickly here. 2013 expected to be up in there in the $1.5 billion. Um, NeoWiz and Giant seem to be leveling off a bit here. Um, we also saw an announcement from Tencent. Their first quarter earnings were up by a significant amount. They're a huge company. Uh, their earnings and revenue grew dramatically in the first quarter, and I expect that to continue and them to be a, a key player worldwide in terms of, of acquisitions as well. Uh, they recently, well, let me give you, I'll give you a background on that in a minute, but uh, here's what we've seen so far um, in terms of Asian M&A transactions, the most active being Nexon in 2012. And Giant actually has been the most active in 2013 so far. As far as, uh, as, far as Tencent is concerned, Tencent has made an act, uh, obviously bought uh, Riot Games, and then they bought, made a major investment in, um, in Epic and then they uh, bought Level Up, a Singapore company here recently for $27 million. So what do we see? What do we see as, as, as an outlook here in terms of M&A? Well, all companies are trying to increase their mobile presence, and they're primarily doing that through M&A. They're also doing it through partnerships, and they're investing in internal development. Um, Nexon, Nexon's strong earnings really reflect its 2012 purchases, but they have suggested strongly that they're going to be making acquisitions in 2013. Um, Giant also announced, they seem to come alive and announced that M&A will be one of its avenues for developing uh, its mobile offerings. So let's talk about moving forward, and I'd like to, I'd like to hear any questions or comments you have on this, because it's, kind of, it's, it's rather controversial. Um, 2013 started off um, to be a bit slower than the beginning of 2011 and 2013. Um, primary reason for this, we think, is because the U.S. tax laws changed in 2012 to 2013, and that accelerated a lot of M&A generally in 2012. People were trying to do deals faster to take advantage of those tax laws in the U.S. Um, seasonality, larger deals are usually done in the second half of, 
of the year. So if you're planning on selling your company this year, you need to get ready now because most of these deals will happen in the second half of 2013. Um, we also saw in 2012 less sophisticated buyers tempted to uh, buy ma to be in mass denial of how they, hard it is to build. So they were a lot of buying going on, blind buying going on, crazy valuations. And it was a frothy social games market, uh, really got ahead of itself as was witnessed by um, some of the Zynga acquisitions that uh, they made in the space. But what's driving the, uh, the acquisitions in 2013 is we're seeing a, a lot of platform rotation in terms of tablets. We see the console cycle taking effect. Um, we see a lot of new software and uh, design innovation. Uh, loca Location-based games, for example, are coming to the um, to the forefront with a recent ac acquisition by Yahoo getting into the space. Um, there's a lot of changes happening in equity crowdfunding. Kickstarter nearly raised $50 million without, um, for companies without uh, any equity being taken by those investors. And that really pressures the market into making, into making further acquisitions. And the other major factor here is the U.S. Android gro uh, games growth. Uh, Google Play the game services, as you saw, was announced. They're going to make a major play in the market. And that brings me to the, uh, to the uh, ne almost the end here in terms of what's going on in terms of buyers. We're seeing the arrival of the non-traditional game acquisition, game acquirers, game buyers. Um, Yahoo, Google, Amazon, Warner Brothers, uh, Turner, all of those companies are, are, are hiring people in their organizations to be in the game business. They're going to really churn up the market, I think, in the rest of 2013 and 2014. And that will spur more acquisitions by the traditional players in the game business, like Big Fish and, and Kabam and, and others, Activision and those types of players. So you, with, these, with these big players, with pretty much unlimited cash, we're going to see them move into the game market as they've indicated, and, and turn it up. These guys are tech sophisticated. Um, they have deep expertise at hand. They're looking for the best of the best. Um, they understand why they're buying companies. Uh, they also are very disciplined in their M&A process, more disciplined than what has traditionally happened in the game M&A space. Um, also, they uh, are also able to factor in costs of hiring and training. They understand what it is to build versus buy. And uh, so that's going to spur a lot, of, a lot of acquisition. They have, an as I mentioned before, they have an unlimited cash and they have a long-term outlook. Many of these companies don't have to make money on their games business in the foreseeable future. They're building for the long-term future. They're there to, to change the games business as we know it. Um, so in conclusion, what I would say is it is an incredible industry um, with Asia uniquely positioned to be the leader in the industry. Um, it was a top year in M&A, and it's going to be uh, the most active and the highest valuations we've ever seen in M&A in 2013. Um, there's huge demand for technology. Talent, talent is scarce, so talent is very, very valuable. And growth drives demand. If your company focus on growth, if your company is growing, it's valuable. No matter if you're growing from 500 to $800,000 in revenue or $80 million to $120 million in revenue, you're valuable if you're growing. Um, as I said, the strategic players are arriving and the opportunities are uh, unlimited. So let's take some questions. We've got a mic at the back here. Yeah, we got any questions? Hello. Yeah, just wondering. Uh, there is a, uh, there are regulatory changes in the U.S. with regards to online gambling. How is that going to affect MA in Asia? Um, so the, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Yeah, there, there are regulatory changes in uh, online gambling in the U.S. Oh, okay. How is that going to affect MA in Asia? Um, I'm not sure of the effect that it will have on Asia. You're talking about gambling, correct? Yeah, the, we're seeing a lot of changes in online gambling in um, the U.S. 
there are players that are struggling with how to do that. So you've got the traditional casinos that want to capture their customers that come into the casino on a, you know, every year, every half year, every three months. They want to capture them and, get, and capture their time every day with virtual online um, casino games. I think that, um, and then they've got, we've got Zynga with uh, Zynga Poker and other companies with slot machines like uh, Big Fish and Kabam that are in that business as a casual business, but not for money. But as that changes, those two groups of companies are trying to, uh, you know, trying to get there first and try to perfect that ability to capture that gambling customer. Um, also, there are third-party companies that traditionally supply hardware or uh, uh, other services to the casinos and brand their slot machines, like IGT will brand slot machines for any particular casino or brand them for a particular uh, lifestyle brand. And uh, they, they are trying to get into that space as well so that they can provide those casinos, those brand name casinos with solutions to get their customers online and retain, and retain them. There's a lot of activity in terms of uh, customer loyalty customer loyalty programs, how do we retain our customer? When they leave the, the, the casino floor, how do I get them online to earn points so that they'll come back to my casino sooner? A lot of activity there. As far as the Asian impact, uh, or how will it impact Asia, I'm not sure, I don't know. If you have feelings on that, let us know. But um, there's a lot of experience uh, here in terms, of, uh, in terms of gaming on and gambling online that could uh, that could add to the, or could benefit to the players in the U.S. There's a tremendous amount of um, expertise in Europe in, uh, in terms of online gambling for money that is uh, filtering into the U.S. as online for money gambling gets legalized. Hope that answers your question. Question, other questions? Yeah, got another one right here. Yeah, uh, I was wondering about uh, m many of the big deals uh, last year uh, happened with uh, Asian companies, but the targets were also Asian companies, like for example, uh, Gloops or Pokelevo were all uh, both uh, acquired by Japanese companies, and they are Japanese companies. Uh, what's your perspective in overseas M&A? Uh, do you think that's going to be bigger this year, or is the trend going to be similar? Um, I think you're going to see a, t a similar trend. I just see that um, the U.S. buyers, the non-traditional buyers, will be a bigger player in competing for those companies. Um, so that, you know, you've got the, the Yahoo's of the world and the Googles and, um, and the, some of the film companies or the big media companies that will play a bigger role in that business. Um, but I, more importantly, I see the Asian companies coming into North America and making significant acquisitions um, like like uh, Tencent did, or at least investments. Um, and I think that trend will, will be significant. Other questions? Yeah. Hi, Hi Jim. Uh, my question is uh, geographical location of the company and how that affects uh, an acquisition. Uh, I know in San Francisco, as an example, you see a lot of M&A activity there. We're in Toronto, and uh, the M&A activity there isn't nearly as aggressive. and. Uh, does ge geography have a big impact on an, on an acquisition? That's a great question. Um, it really depends on the buyer. I've seen buyers that will only buy if you're located on the West Coast, and I've seen lo of, of the United States. I've seen buyers that will only buy if you're based in San Francisco, and then there are other buyers that they don't care where you're located. I think the activity in Canada, so you're from Toronto? Yeah. So uh, I think the activity... Um, in Canada will increase dramatically. There's a lot of talent, a lot of great studios, and a lot of revenue being generated by a number of companies throughout Canada. So I don't think that's, that's a, a real issue um, in terms of ge ge geography, but it depends on the company. Um, and some of the companies require relocation. It's just not an option. You need to be, to be relocating to be in that, in that space. But I think it's going to widen quite a bit. Any other questions? No? Okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move on. Um, let me just check the time here. Yeah, we're going to 
I'm going to move into our other presentation. If you want just a two-minute break while I change slideshows here, and then we'll go into the do's and don'ts of uh, selling your company. <laughs> 